Welcome, 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 welcome. You are now tuning in with Eyes on Podium Podcast. I'm here with my bro, Henny. I'll let you. I'll let you pass today. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. We are going to be talking about the Olympics and what's been going on in the offseason. Let's go. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. But before we do that, we would love for you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. As always. As always. It, and you know we got the best intro, outro music in the business. And we can't start or end the show without letting you experience such things. I want to jump on the remix. Ooh. Twenty twenty four Olympics. It hosts a lot of big names. The conversation mm-hmm. is who is going to be in the starting lineup. I think they claim they named it already, right? Any? No, nah, they didn't name. They just said, uh, you know, rumor that right. This is what it's going to be, but I don't. It's not official yet. All right. So for the people, can you please inform them? what those five may end up being. So the uh, five would be Curry, mm-hmm. Tatum, mm-hmm. KD, mm-hmm. LeBron, mm-hmm. and Joel Embiid. <laughs> what? Say, say your piece. I mean... Say your piece. What do you think about that starting lineup? I love it. We got we got we got Tatum playing the so on paper we got Tatum playing the two, KD playing the three, uh huh, um, LeBron playing the four, and Joel playing the five, and we got Curry playing the one. Now, what's good about this lineup is LeBron's going to be the one, right. KD's going to be the four, Tatum is going to be the three, and Curry's going to be the two. Right. I I don't see nobody in this world that's going to stop a LeBron Curry Joel Embiid tandem. Okay. That's going to be ridiculous. Then you got these these two snipers at the wings, Tatum and uh, KD. Like, that's going to be ridiculous. As a starting five, that's going to be ridiculous. I just, you, you said snipers. You didn't include Curry. I mean, I don't even have to say it. <laughs> we, know, we know what he does. Everybody, everybody in the world knows what he does. I don't I- have to say it. I'm 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 here for the I'm here for the 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 Olympics. I'm here to see how they do. Um, but but if you ask I feel like, I feel like you have I feel like you have a different starting lineup that will bring USA gold. I feel like it should definitely be Kawhi instead of Tatum. Nobody else that you want to change out. Um. I don't think LeBron should be playing a lot of minutes. No, 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 no. You could start, play one minute, like I think Joel is going to be, Joel is going to do. He's going to start and play one minute and then go sit for the rest of the Olympics. I'm talking about starting lineup. Nah, I, I, that's a cool starting lineup. Based off of who was, who's in it, who's in the Tatum, I understand Tatum won a championship. 
You know what I mean? Uh, LeBron running the point. I mean, he's top five in assists of all time. Um, and I think he's fourth actually. Um, yeah, I think he's fourth. Joel, Joel is the mid king, right? The mini, the mini range king. He's mm. he's 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 probably has the best mid range game on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you got Curry who stretches the defense. Which is gonna allow Joel to just do whatever he wants and get France right. upset. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then you have you have um, Tatum. It's the Tatum and KD. I mean, KD could do anything. I mean, just yeah. put him anywhere. Just once the right. ball gets swung to him, it's just going in the hoop. Exactly. He'll swing it back. Don't get it twisted. He'll swing it back. I'm not trying to say he don't swing mm-hmm. it back, but. Um, I would have preferred, I get it, but I would have preferred Kawhi, um, over Tatum. Cause Tatum, I feel like Tatum, off, off ball Tatum. Do we like off ball Tatum? Do I like off ball Tatum? Yeah. Over off ball Kawhi. It won him a ring. It won him a ring. No, he was on ball. I mean, he was technically the point forward. Tatum? Yeah. He was on ball. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Tatum's going to be taking a lot of sidestep threes. I just I just don't want to see it. I just don't want to see it. But whatever. This, this if is you want a championship. This is where you come. Um, you play you, a lot of a lot of players, they play USA ball and get better. This is where you this is where you come in and just do things, work on things that you're not used to. So Tatum being off ball, he, you know, he work he works on that because he's not usually off ball. Right. Curry works on off ball, off ball stuff. You know, Joe Joel Embiid. I mean, he's gonna just do what do what he does. So, but I think Tatum would would flourish off of this uh, type of environment and take it back to his team so they can get better. Is he gonna so be a slasher? Tatum. Yeah. I mean, whatever, 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 um, Curry, whatever Steve Kerr runs, you know, that's another question now. Who, who is this team ran through? Um, oof. Yeah. I think it would have to be a motion. Because you got Curry, he's a little older. LeBron's a little older. KD's a little older. Is it Tatum that they run this offense through? I hope not. Because just because of his young legs. Uh, I, I, I... Yeah, that's the question. Like, yeah, you got these vets on your team, but right. in order to win, it has to be one what dedicated to one person. Not necessarily de- dedicated, right. but it has to be a first option. Everybody right. can't be a first option, right? You know. Is it? Are they going to play? Okay, whatever the game calls for, will that give them success? Especially, especially when you know you got France with the twin towers. I was you got like, Canada was... looking, looking, looking bold. Mm-hmm. So, I, like, I would say KD. KD. Yeah. Why? Because he's a, he's 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 deficient. I would say running through KD. Mm-hmm. Running through KD. And Steph. Mm-hmm. And have um what's his name? Jason Tatum cutting spying up mm-hmm. and running through Joel. I think it should be like that that right there. Ah mm. uh, me personally I would probably run a lot of horn sets, that's just screens. Just for all my uh, KD, Curry, LeBron at the one, pick and roll with Joel, you know. Yeah, and but it's a different have... game in FIBA. And see, yeah, that's, it is. that's the other thing, right? Like, I'm not too keen on how the FIBA style is going to be. I'm extremely excited for the games that they do play. But just based on their skill sets, mm-hmm. I mean, KD's, if KD takes 15 shots, and Tatum takes fifteen shots. Who do you think is gonna be more efficient? 
that's Katie. just that's just the thing, right? Yeah. So it's like, is Tatum gonna be mellow, Olympic mellow? I feel like he would have to be Olympic mellow. So, so we referring to old players. Um, I I think that I think that Anthony Edwards could be D Wade in this situation. Just worried about scoring. Maybe, maybe um, you know, maybe the offense can be run through him uh, when know? he comes off the bench. When he comes off the bench, he could be the leading scorer. It's not. It's not too crazy for that to happen. It's happened before. I don't think so at all. I think that's a great idea. I don't think it's crazy when I say it. Yeah. You know, you you share you because of the the age of the starting lineup. uh, Mm -hmm. Quote unquote starting lineup. This is what what we think and what they're saying. That maybe the bench really is the bulk of the scoring, while the starters just you know get an idea of what what they're playing. That's that a, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Then that means should that means the bench should be starting and the starters should be coming off the bench. Not necessarily. This is for you, this is for you of basketball. You have a lot of talent. You know. Again, yeah. this is a situation where you can work on other things. Anthony Edwards. He he has he has to be a two way player. Here he doesn't have to be a two way player. He can be a scorer here. Right. Straight buckets. You know? Straight buckets. It, it a lot of. A lot of players can be different things. Who knows? Maybe Joel. Maybe Joel's the uh, the power forward. I mean, maybe Joel's the point guard. Maybe they run the offense through him. They get him the ball. They get him at the high the high key, mm-hmm. and this punch just picking picking rolls on the wings. LeBron screening for Curry. Curry for the three. Joel has ten assists. <laughs> Who knows? Not just saying like that's any, what I'm any, saying. Run. You can run it through Joel. I was like, you can run it through yeah. Joel too at the top of the key. Yeah, he's a, he's an excellent passer. Yes, excellent passer. He's not. He, he he. It's not like he can't facilitate. Who who do you think like from the from the young players, um, is going to take the biggest leap next season? Like on uh, you didn't on get the USA to see team. anybody, but just based off of paper warriors on the USA team. Uh huh. I think? would say I would probably say Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah, because he's he's gonna he's he's a he's a point guard that passes. He's gonna mm-hmm. watch LeBron a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that he's gonna watch LeBron a lot and see other ways that he can be effective on on the game. Just right. No matter what, without it, scoring. It, it's, yeah, it starts with him. He's a great he's a great passer, but it's more than just passing and getting your assists. It's the effectiveness of that one pass. Not just pass, oh I got nine I got nine assists, I need ten. Let me just pass it because, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think I think Tyrese would we're gonna see a leap from him. We're gonna see a superstar when he comes back and takes what he learned in the USA around all these all these other superstars and mm-hmm. take his take his team into the playoffs. I'm I'm gonna say um, Devin Booker. Mm. I think he's gonna be the reason why he's gonna be in the MVP case, MVP race this season, this upcoming season. I think he's gonna be able to carry his team to the top four seed, and be in that conversation, and being the Devin Booker that we thought he was always gonna be. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, I, and he's gonna just he, he's he's gonna understand how to win, and playing roles, yes. right? Yeah, and putting people in these spots, and and not just getting a bucket. I would I would agree with you, but because he's also that, been playing great defense, not great. He's been playing really good defense. Right, he's been leading up to playing really good defense, being two way. Thing about that Phoenix team is a lot of players are out of position, man. They still out of position. He's playing. I know he's been doing a great job as the as the one, but I would love to see somebody else setting him up instead of him setting other people up. I don't like that for Devin Booker. I want to see him average forty. I don't want to see him average twenty and ten. I want to see him average forty. 
<laughs> but like that's his that's his that's his better that's his better attribute to me. And that team still needs still needs a a point guard. Still needs a point guard, a facilitating yeah. point guard that doesn't have to worry Tyrese about Tyrese Jones is out there. They gotta go figure yeah. that out. Yeah. Sign a trade or something. Figure that out. Oh, you know, during the second apron, I don't think they could do a signing trade. Man, they can't do nothing. They're about to lose. Well, ooh, that's another question, too. What if you ain't got no picks to lose? No, it's frozen. Like, so 2032 pick is frozen. So, oh, they, they, so yeah. whatever their next pick is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It automatically, so, it automatically goes to 30. Okay. But so they, so say, 2030 comes and they've they've been under the apron. It's still frozen. No, they're good. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's frozen until until okay. Yeah, let me tell you. So um, they got Demar Derozan got traded to the Sacramento Kings. Sacramento Kings. What'd you think about that? Oh, what'd you think? Because so, you you know how I feel about Demar. It's crazy. I, I, I I I wanted before the Knicks got Mikael Bridges, um, um, I wanted Demar Derozan on the Knicks, right? As a Knicks fan, right. that's what I wanted. To come off the bench. I wanted him to come off the bench. Um, sorry about that, people. But yeah, obviously that doesn't make any sense, and he's not trying to come off the bench. Um, and take what we had to give him a vet minimum or something. No, the same. No, we could have got him. What we it was the, got him with. It was the same number. Yeah. I was saying that he can get seventy five, or for for three years, or right. sixty for three, depending on how however they did it, whatever the case may be. Right. Um. So, the map. I think I think it works well. I think Demar going to Sacramento is a really good trade, and mm-hmm. I think he's going to provide that consistency. Regardless yeah. of what, he's going to be consistent. He's going to be efficient. He's going to be a high IQ ball player on the court. Right. Right? He gets he 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 can now run the offense as well. It's not always going to yeah. just be Sabonis. Right? Yeah. And and Foxy so he he gets them off ball. He gets Foxy mm-hmm. off ball and slashing, you know what I mean? He gets the pace up. Um and he's a closer. Fox is a yeah. closer too, but he's also a closer. Right. So you have two right. closers. And then Malik Monk coming off the bench. That's awesome. They kept Kevin Herter. So the spacing is going to be cool because oh. they have Keegan Murray and Kevin yeah. Herter on the, on the wings who can space the floor. Um, and you know, what's his name? Sabonis plays out the high post. So the dunker yeah. spot is always open for a player like Damar. Um, and I think the Demar Sabonis tandem is gonna be tough. Yeah, he's a good passer. I I like it. I don't think we're gonna see the Demar of Chicago of the Spurs. You know, a a top twenty player probably his scoring are probably gonna go down because top twenty he, is uh, crazy. I'm talking you about mean twenty percent, twenty twenty. Points per game player. No, top top twenty in the NBA. With Chicago and San Antonio? Yeah. No. He was never. Yes. There was what no else? season when he was in San Antonio, he was top twenty player. Top twenty player. No season. In San Antonio? That he played in San Antonio, that he was a top twenty player. No season. Zero. Zilch. Top twenty? Chicago, no. first, his first year in Chicago, he averaged 27. Second year, he averaged 24. Third year, he averaged 22. What year is what and year? You know is the... And you know he's shooting. And you know he's shooting a high percentage, 50. He, he's been compared to Wilt a lot, a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, 21, first year in San Antonio, 23, second year, third year, 23. Yeah. So 21, 22. 50. 54%, 51%, 52%, 52%, 50%. That is the last five years. What are we talking about? He ain't top That's 20. not a top player? He's a top player, but top. not top 20. 20 is, top. 20 is high. How? Because that's like all How? NBA. He's not all NBA. Average, average five, five assists. That's tough. 
This is last year. Five assists, one steal. Uh, let me get his rebounds. Three rebounds. So he's a twenty-three and three player. That's not top top player. No. How many players not. are doing that? It's not. I, I'm I'm pulling up the All NBA list right now. <laughs> Cause just deep this this already is fifteen. So you saying he's like fourth team All NBA? Yeah. No. You know it's politics in in a first team voting. It's politics. First team is cool. Give Whatever. Him his respect. Whatever. Give him first respect. team is cool. Yeah. Twenty one, twenty two. Whatever. Why don't see Julius here? Like I said, like I said, his scoring is going to go down. I think, I think, yeah, I think yeah, Fox yeah. takes a a huge leap, a huge, a huge leap. Yeah, like maybe top ten, top ten in MVP voting, that type of leap. I think this is this is his not last chance, but this is as best as it's going to get. And this is this. He's playing for a contract. Uh, yeah, and the West is open, so. He, they, the Sacramento Kings are poised to step in there and and head to the promised land. They got all the pieces. Oh. They got the, they got the stars. What else more do you need? Let's see how let's see how it gels. I think I think I think uh, Debo is a perfect perfect asset to replace um, Harrison Barnes. They need that consistent high percentage type of player in that position. Mm-hmm. It's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. I like it. All right, all right, all right. They're probably in the second apron here, definitely. Uh, I I don't know. I gotta see. I gotta see how it goes. Yeah, we'll have to look. yeah. Um, another trade that got completed mm. was yours truly. Um, New York Knicks. They what officially hell? announced. The OG re-signing. Um, so, how do you feel like OG and Mikel Bridges is going to change or upgrade the Knicks? Um, oh, what effects? What do you think? What's the what's the effects of that? So we finished this. Let me just. Uh... I Check think we have. Point. I think the Knicks were fifty games. They won fifty. They won fifty. Mm-hmm. Fifty um, flat, I think too. I just want to see their defensive defensive numbers as a team. Uh, I think they were top ten. Top ten. Nine. But I, I think they were nine. Nine as a team. I believe so. I think we go. I think we go one or two. <laughs> you think the Knicks with 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 uh Mikel Bridges and OG and Nobi it will be able one to make two. them a top one or two defensive team in NBA? Yeah, not even not even that with Tibbs. Mm. Mitchell Robinson all times he's gonna be uh uh the center now. In the running for defensive player of the year. Has to be. He I mean, has to be. You got two players. He just... has something to prove. He's been in all these trade talks. He has something to prove. Mm. He's been Bridges... in a lot of trade talks. And Bridges... He knows it. Mikel Bridges was runner up to defensive player of the year a couple seasons ago. When he was with the Suns. Right. Um, Third so option. Was, so was um, OG and Nobi when he was with Toronto. Mm-hmm. And they mo- and so they both was... made all defensive teams. Yep. So why not? Why can't we be one or two? What you think? I think I think um I don't I'm curious to see what kind of Mikel Bridges the Knicks are gonna get. Right? Um what is OG gonna do? I know what he's gonna do. He's gonna stay in the corner, he's gonna slash, he's gonna shoot fifty percent from the three, from the corners. Um mm-hmm. he's probably gonna bump up his scoring a little bit because they're gonna run some plays through him more often. Um, because he actually is efficient in the mid range. Um, but what kind of player, what kind of Mikael Bridges are we gonna get with the loss of Isaiah Hartenstein? Do you, I don't what, know. In what year? What year? Besides his rookie year, what year wasn't is a Mikael that you wouldn't want? 
Well, that's the thing. I'm just I'm not saying I wouldn't want any of them. I'm just curious to see what is mm-hmm. which one we're gonna get. Right? Are we gonna get the scorer? Right? Um, is he gonna be handling the ball a lot? Is is mm-hmm. is he gonna be able to put J J Jalen um Brunson off ball and put um Julius off ball? Is he gonna be able to make make plays? I don't know. But if he does do that, I think that helps the team. I think it. I think it offsets what Hartenstein was bringing to the team. If Mikel could do playmaking at a higher level than the than the point center, the baby Jokic, um, Isaiah Hartenstein, um, yeah, like, is he gonna be RJ who just gonna be getting buckets? Because mm-hmm. that, that's not what we need. Right. I think he. Um, let me check his uh build real quick. Sorry. So Mikel's listed here as hold on. He's listed as as six six. Yeah, he's six. So the thing the thing with RJ, he should have played the two. Maybe that might have you know. He had ball handling. His ball handling wasn't that good. I I understand that. I understand that. You don't. You don't necessarily. It wasn't necessarily for for him to bring up the ball, but more so angling. You know, seeing just attacking from a different position, more, more, more at the wing than than him playing the three with another two guard. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Something different, but he's he's on the Raptors. <laughs> um, Mikel, gonna be playing the two, guarding twos, maybe some threes, maybe some ones because of his length mm-hmm. and his. Def- defensive ability i think um we're not going to see the mikhail when he first got to uh brooklyn Brooklyn. that i don't think i don't think that we're going to see what he did with phoenix was be a spot up play defense maybe some playmaking um let me see what he averaged here in phoenix let me ask you a question which if paul george was here would you say the same thing yeah, because of his age. So if Paul George was there in that position, you would expect him to do what? Play defense, spot up, play make somewhat, and guard threes, twos, ones. I think the Knicks got a better version. I think the Knicks got a better version of Paul George. I don't think so. And Mikel Bridges. This guy went toe-to-toe with LeBron James. Do you see Mikel going I mean, toe-to-toe with I mean, LeBron James? Uh, Paul now? George today. Oh. Eh. Not like prior lateral. Paul George. I'm not saying Lateral. That. It's a lateral. I think he's better today. I think Mikel Bridges today is better than Paul George today. I don't think so. Yeah. We're going to see, though. I don't think so. I think he's he a better defender. He averaged 5 and 3. Who? Paul George. Okay, Mikel. Mikel averaged nineteen. I stop you right. Don't even type it. Don't even. Don't even type it. Just hit backspace. <laughs> hit backspace. Just go back. <laughs> it, oh don't, don't even bother. Don't oh even bother. Oh my gosh. You have a 20, Paul George. He have a twenty six on it. Paul like, George had a a fifty forty ninety six season. Let's stop. I'm being disrespectful. That's it. Yeah, you were very disrespectful. I apologize. You were very disrespectful. Apologize. We don't have a better version of Paul George. Apologize. I'm a delusional fan. I'm delusional. <laughs> I'm a delusional. Right, I had to I had to rail you back. Yeah, real you rail me back in. We do not. We do not have a better version of Paul George. You're we right. have Mikel Bridges. You're right. A great third option. A great third option. Mm-hmm. Would I have loved Paul Paul George? I did. I did yeah, I would have. I would have taken Paul George. But with the power of friendship, anything is possible. What is the stat line? What are you happy with his stat line to be? Um, Mikel Bridges. Um, plus minus. I'm more so. That's what I'm worth. That's what I'm more. Cons- I mean, like not his box scores, but... like points, rebounds, and assists. Like so, he averaged with. He averaged nineteen. I don't know the rest, but he averaged nineteen. What else? Nineteen, nineteen, three and a half assists, four and a half uh-huh. rebounds, two turnovers. So that maybe that same thing. 
back. <laughs> yeah. What did Dante DiVincenzo average last season? I think like 14. Let's check that. How much better is he going to be than Dante DiVincenzo? That's a good question because now that Dante, now that Dante is going to be worried about more scoring no, than I mean defense. Like last year, Dante DiVincenzo. What you mean? How much better is this upcoming Mikel Bridges going to be better than last year's version of Dante DiVincenzo? I think I think I'm hoping for Mikel to play defense as good as as good as. Dante shot the three. Mm. So that would be the trade-off. Mm. So if I can get that, like, okay, Dante has the ball. He's shooting. It's a good chance it's going to go in. Okay, Mikel is guarding this player. It's a good chance that they're going to miss. That's all. That's that's a good trade-off, I'm, and I'm happy with. Okay. And he can create for himself off ball. Yes, he could create. Dante could create for himself. He could. When 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 Jalen went down, you know, he he went for forty. No, he could. He, yeah. he he definitely can. He's just undersized, but he definitely yeah. can. Dante yeah. is is is, sure. is Dante Inferno. That's why they call him Dante yeah. Inferno. He's the guy. That Mikel, that that New York bench is going to be amazing. He shot forty four percent. No, 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 hold on. He shot 40% from three off eight and a half attempts a game. So what he hit, like, uh, three, 3.6? Three and a half. Yeah, exactly. Wow, you're, you're, you're a math Something genius. Like yeah. <laughs> you're a math genius. Um, so, so how does this affect Julius' play, gameplay? Uh, well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Everyone's saying, know. everyone's saying like, oh, they're going to trade Julius. I don't think Julius, but I feel like Julius is the, the second best shot creator on the team. You I don't think like, he is? I think he is. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. I think he can. But be, it's, it's funny you say that. I don't think he had, I don't think he'd be doing that on purpose. Like, you know how Jalen <laughs> stepped back. Julius puts himself in that situation every oh single time. Gosh. Open threes, waits for the opponent to dribble, step back, shoot, and makes them. He makes them when he was here. When he in the beginning of the season, he was making them. It was like it is what it is. As long he as he stopped going. doing that, though, we got to give him credit when credit is deserved. He stopped doing that. He turned that down. I won't say stop. He turned it down. He started actually just catching and shooting. Yeah, I guess. I think he demands a double team. I don't know if Mikel Bridges does. So I he, agree. He, he demands a double team. That's why he's the best as a third option. Who? Mikel. Yeah. So who's the, who's the fourth? Jalen or Randall. So you're when paying Jaylen your fourth Randall? option $44 million or however much he's getting. Who's the fourth option? OG. Yeah. Because it's not. that's not why I brought him here. You can't think. because Offense is not just. It's not everything. Mm-hmm. We've seen what our defense did when OG was here. That's as important as a player who averages 30. That's a fact. You can't you can't just go off of, of scoring. So what he averages 10. Does does whoever whoever he guarding, how much do they average at the end of the, at the end of the game? Yep. That's how much fact. did they have at the end of the game? So I'm okay with paying somebody that amount when mm-hmm. <laughs> when they change our defense that good. If he's a fourth option, he's a fourth option. Um, I'm here for that. Um, yeah. uh, right before we leave the Knicks, one more thing is Leon Rose wheeling and dealing. Mm-hmm. Um, they sign the rookie and uh, Pacomi Diate. Diate. I still. I've been, I've been watching. Trying to read that name for the longest. I need um, to hear. I need to hear. I wonder. I can't wait for Clyde to try to pronounce that. <laughs> That's going to be a show. Clyde trying to pronounce his name is going to be a show. They they really showed up the back end of their roster with Tyler Kolick, um, 
I just, I, I mean, I don't know much about him. I just seen a bunch of highlights, and highlights is only going to show mm-hmm. you highlights. Um, yeah. But they, they did say he was a dog. Um, his coach is known for coaching dogs. Um, and then he gonna fit right in. Uh, their bench. They did enough to go get to re-sign Precious Achua. Yeah. They haven't done that yet. Why? Um, I've heard something about Capella. Mm -hmm. Um, because he's an expiring contract. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I heard uh, Kessel Walker. But I don't know what they're trying to do, but they haven't re-signed Precious Achua, and I'm curious as to know why, when they actually yeah. have the exception to go get him. And they need a backup they need a backup five. They need a backup forward. But I guess Josh that's Josh Hart. Yeah. The point, the center of our team. <laughs> but yeah. He rebounds like it. He rebounds like it. So I'm curious to see what how, how they end out their their offseason. We'll talk about that mm-hmm. a little later. Um, one thing before we go, let's wrap up with uh PG. Um, let's wrap up with not PG. Um, Seventy Sixers, they just signed Caleb Martin. Seventy Sixers is looking like they have the best off season in the NBA. Um, they're getting key pieces. Yeah. This team is going to be a team that's going to be a problem for years to come, barring health. Oh, so we're talking about future. Yeah, I don't think that their first year is going to amount to nothing more than probably a first round exit again. Mm. Um, but I think they're still in the second round, and that's high ceiling. And that's I, because if, to... I don't think you can assemble a team in the summer and then go out and then go win mm-hmm. fifty games. If they do that, that's amazing. So you say uh, they had the best all season. I would have to disagree. In my opinion, mm. I would have to say the Spurs. CP3. Why? Uh-huh. CP3. He, every team that he's been on, they've had a better winning record. They've competed and went to the playoffs besides uh, Warriors. Mm-hmm. I blame Steph Curry, but it's neither here nor there. Um, I think the Spurs had the best all season, just acquiring – CP3, what he does to teams and how he leads them is very is very impressive. Now, no, no, in this uh, DeMar DeRozan trade, they did get Harrison Barnes. So, I know he's not no DeMar, but he's been to the promised land. He knows what it takes to win. He's he's vowed not to cut his hair until he was over 500. Okay. So, I'm just saying. I I mean, I, 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 think, get, I mean, Harrison I think the Spurs, Barnes is, Spurs is cool, have the bro. best all season. One player, very infectious, and then he's mentoring mentoring Wemby. You see what he's doing in France. They uh, what he's doing in a. Um, what I mean, is that I people? guess. I guess. Right. I mean, right. I mean, look, Philly, 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 setting up their books for the next four years. Mm-hmm. They That's are. what they're doing. Um, they they're in the same predicament as the Knicks. They they this is the window four years. No, four or five years. Yeah, but they're in like year one. They're like in. I don't think I don't think they're in contendership yet. Do they got a great play? Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yes, matter. It doesn't matter what Knicks you think. It matters what they. If you think they not if you think they not thinking that they competed, then no, they're, they're competing. Wrong. They're basketball players. Yeah. I will hope to think that they think they're they're competing, right? Right. What I'm saying is. They don't. We they haven't they haven't played. This is like a new. This yeah. is about to be an AAU team for them. That's what this is about to be with them right now. A AAU team, right? They are bringing back Kelly Oubre. Cool. They have Maxi. Great. Joel Embiid is there. Awesome. Ricky Council. I think he's still there. Great. Those four I players are the only players that that's that's still there from last season. You're bringing in Eric Gordon, PG, Caleb Martin, mm. Andre Drummond. You br- like you you bringing in a whole unit. You are replacing yeah. three starters or two start, but yeah, you're replacing three starters. Mm-hmm. 
um and you're and you are adding three four more rotational players i mean yeah. i i just that's that's aau yeah all right, yeah. All, right all right aau has a limit when you start when you play against a raw or machine you're gonna see the difference between talent getting together and a team getting together with talent yeah 100 percent agree but yeah Eyes on Podium Podcast. We appreciate y'all coming out to uh, rocking with us today on this awesome appreciate Sunday. It. Shout out to my like, guy, comment, subscribe. Coach Chris. Today is his Shout birthday. Chris. That's and why he's not here. No, the reason he's not here is because he's fired on his birthday. That's a Christmas gift to him. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Please. I love 40 of podcasts. Chris just turned 40.